Hey, Kent. Hey, what? You, <laughs> you jumped in front of me. <laughs> uh, Say hi, on. Kent. That's, that's hilarious. Maybe we should make this my episode because I'm also speaking. Um, <laughs> just oh, kidding. yeah. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Ryan, I'm excited that you're going to be speaking at Epic Web Conf in April. Um, and I wanted people, I, I want, I want people to want to come and meet the speakers. Um, I, I think that, um, for me myself, I have had job opportunities from relationships that I built uh, at conferences um, and being in person. Like, I, I'm glad that we're going to be live streaming the conference and, and the videos will go up and everything. I think the knowledge should go to everybody, but the experience is the only, is something that you can only get in person. So I want totally. you to give people as much FOMO as possible by introducing yourself. And, and <laughs> no, I actually, I wanted to, I want to say something about that. Uh, when I, earlier in my career, I remember going to a conference and there were some people that I wanted to talk to that like, who were some of the speakers and online personalities that I knew. And, um, they were not very personable and they were hard to approach. Hmm. And, uh, and I kind of thought, wow, they're kind of jerks. Um, and like, that's why I was going to the conference mostly, uh, was mm. to meet them and talk to them about stuff. And then, uh, and then I was at a conference myself, I think it was Ember Conf a long time ago. And there were some people that I wanted to talk to and I could never talk to them because I was constantly like being followed and talk like, uh, like a bunch of people were approaching me. Right. And trying to talk oh. to me. And then it clicked. I'm like, oh my gosh. I'm one of those people to this person, right? Like this person came to the conference and they were like, I want to go talk to Ryan about whatever weird Ember thing I was doing at the time. Uh -huh. Right. And like it clicked. I was like, Oh, they want to talk to me. And so my whole mindset at conferences completely shifted. Once I realized that like people wanted to meet me, so I'm going to, I'm going to be meetable. Hmm. Um, I think you had that shirt that says like, you can sit with us or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so that ever since that conference, um, I've always tried to be really mindful of like, people might want to talk to me because I do some stuff that they've used or heard of. So I'm going to, I'm going to try to be meetable. So come to the conference, come say hi to me. Awesome. Uh, if I, if I don't want to talk, I will be like in my room or in my car, just like sitting there trying to recharge my social batteries. <laughs> <laughs> but if I'm out in public and I'm around absolutely approach me and I will try to approach you. Super. Yeah. I, I love that invitation. Uh, as, uh, like you've already kind of turned the conversation, uh, the opposite direction, starting by being the one to start the conversation. And that's actually <laughs> a, a question that I ask later on in the interview is like, what do you want to talk with people about? So I'm going to save that till after we get to know you, uh, a little bit. So Ryan, um, what are you into? What, what are you working on? Um, I'm working on getting this office better cause I want to make more videos. So I'm like sticking oh, sound yeah. oh, stuff nice. on all the ceilings. I've got piles of sound things everywhere. Um, I've been having a blast making the re the latest remix singles. Hmm. Um, did the one on Trellix to show off how remix can be built with, uh, can use, be used to build apps. Lots of like, it's like about as, except for Figma and like canvas or charts drag and drop Trello boards like are pretty close to the limit of what web apps do in complexity of like user experience. Right. Yeah. Yeah. For um, sure. And uh, so anyway, that's, that was that one. And I did all the crazy data loading and client side caching with our new client loaders and stuff in remix um, made those videos. So yeah, I'm, I'm having a blast, having a blast making demos that like teach a, a pretty advanced user experience. Um, I mean, the apps aren't complete, but what parts of the apps I have implemented are are pretty advanced, and so I'm I'm just having a blast showing off how well Remix handles that stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, just to be clear, so because uh, there are some people who may not know, but uh, you're the co-founder and uh, creator, uh, co-creator of Remix. <laughs> so I am. Just so people know, and that's that's why you're doing all of this work on uh, on making Remix awesome and and teaching people why it's so great. S see that empty space right there. Yeah, yeah. That's where that's where my glowing remix sign is going to go. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> I I uh, joked with uh, Zeno, one of the other uh, conference speakers, uh, that the entire reason I'm doing the conference is so I can get an epic web. Uh, a oh, neon a big sign. Like one of those. <laughs> That'd be cool. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, I'm uh, one of the co-creators of Remix and React Router. Uh, Michael and I have been partnering on both businesses and open source for about a decade now. So wow. um, yeah, that's a, it's a long and solid relationship. We've actually been, um, we've actually been pairing, as you know, we've been trying to do this interview, you and I, and, uh, and every time I'm like, nope, sorry, I'm writing code with Michael. <laughs> and uh, we're working on the next uh, pretty major iteration of Remix um, with a, uh, with with some of the features that React has been shipping, like server components and server actions and form actions, a lot of stuff that smells a lot like Remix, but um, fundamentally uh, they kind of change what we can do with Remix, both as just developers and as a framework. And so, yeah, we've been we've been having a blast writing mm -hmm. some code. It's going to be I, I don't want to hype it too much, but I'm when we ship it, I don't think that. I'll ever be more proud of code than what we're working on right wow. now. It's so good. It's that is like awesome. it's like the like React is so good now. React has so many cool capabilities. Um uh we learned a ton with Remix and then uh, uh with a 10-year-old relationship of working and building together. Uh it's 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 kind of like magic right now. It's super fun. I've, I don't think I've ever had this much fun in my career. Well, that that is awesome to hear. Uh, I yeah. I I know that when you were working uh, with Michael on Remix originally, you spent a ton of time pairing, and I I could just like I think you may have t told me this, but I could just tell that you were having a blast. Like that's that's the most creative time is when you and Michael are pairing on on something new. Yeah, that was a little bit under duress though. <laughs> yeah, we gotta make money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so there were there were some corners cut, and we didn't get on the same page with everything. Um, and uh, yeah, we just didn't, we didn't take enough time to mm. really get our the the primitives as well as we could have. But mm. uh, but also now two three years out of building remix, um, we know a whole lot better of of what we need. Hmm. Well, and Shopify too has uh, reduced a lot of the stress around like, how are we going to make money um, <laughs> and stuff like yeah. they've, they've been really good stewards of the project since uh, the acquisition. Yeah. Yeah. Working at Shopify is absolutely fantastic. Nor normally, normally when you ship a new tool or framework or something, you're like your user base and their requirements and their scale grow with you. Right. So like, hmm. Remix has some rough edges, but like the apps are not very big yet that people are mm. building. Um, and then uh, Remix, uh, the apps need more. Remix gets better, and they kind of like they kind of like grow together. Yeah, yeah. You sure. get dropped into Shopify, and it's like, hey, we've got a five million line React app with React Router. How do we get this on Remix? And it's like five million, like literally five million lines of of React. <laughs> Let's get it on Remix. And so it's just sort of like, yeah, or like here's here's 20 merchants that um, have shipped with uh, Hydrogen One, which had uh, probably the first production deployment of uh, React server components. It's like, okay, now Hydrogen Two is on Remix. Let's bring these all these merchants over. And it's like, well, they've all got, they're talking to three CMSs, they're talking to Shopify, they've got like, anyway, like promotions mm -hmm. and all this stuff. And uh, how are we going to do I18N? And mm -hmm. so it's just sort of like, Remix was growing and then we got it to Shopify and now it's just like use cases are through the roof mm, and yeah. we've had to like try to keep up with them, which has been, it's been really good. I, it's, help, it's helped me to like know what to focus on mm -hmm. uh, better than just like a Twitter poll or something, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, that's very cool. Uh, I'm, I'm excited about the stuff that you and Michael and the rest of the team are working on. And I know that there's lots to be excited about. So what are you planning on talking about at Epic WebConf? I keep forgetting what month Epic WebConf is because I'm so busy <laughs> right now. Well, we're, we're so three months and a week and a couple days away. out now. So April 11th is the date. <laughs> That's an eternity. I have no as, idea as what I'm As long as it's in your calendar yet. and blocked out, then I expect <laughs> that you'll be there. <laughs> uh, hang on. Let me see. For those listening, Ryan is literally checking his phone right now to make sure that it's blocked out on his calendar. Yep, I got it in there. Oh, phew. <laughs> what a relief. So Ryan will be there, confirmed. I will be there. I have no clue what I'm going to talk about. Um, depends <laughs> on what we've shipped. I like I like talking about... 
you always want to talk about the thing you're you're trying to ship, hmm. right? That's when you're that's like the most thing you're most about excited it. about, right? Yeah. And then by the time you're done, you're all like bruised, and you know what trade offs that you had to make, and you wish you didn't make the you didn't have to make those trade offs, and then you're just like, yeah, I built a pretty cool thing. I can tell you about it, I guess, if you want. Uh huh. Yeah. But you're not like as hyped anymore, right? Yeah. So I'm trying to I'm trying to shift that, and 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 that's like I said at the beginning of this, like the remix singles, building Trellix and building the the movie app. Um, I'm trying to get back into like hyping the stuff that we shipped a long time ago, and it's actually been a lot of fun. So, hmm. uh, let's see. Things that we've recently shipped is uh, uh, we're calling it. Well, the feature is SSR faults, um, hmm. but we're calling the <laughs> spa mode. Uh, so a, a big requirement um, for embedded apps at Shopify. So when you log into your Shopify admin, because you run a store, um, you can install a bunch of third-party apps, whether it has to do with like some sort of like labeling or shipping, tracking or whatever, right? Hmm. Uh, and these, these uh, and we actually build first-party apps too. So we kind of, we build a lot of extensions to the Shopify admin the same way that third parties would extend it as well. So we call these embedded apps um, and uh, they have to run in an iframe and iframes enable annoying people to track you across the internet and build a profile through all the ad networks that are served over iframes. So Safari and now Chrome have said, you know what? We're not going to let iframes set cookies inside of themselves because mm -hmm. that's how you get tracked. Um, so you can't set a cookie even on your own, like you're a remix app, you're sitting inside of an iframe and you're just like talking to your own action and you're trying to set your own cookie. You can't do it. Mm -hmm. Um, and so uh, it makes it kind of hard to do authentication and stuff um, uh, inside those iframes. So this this was a big, there's a lot of other reasons that we did this, but this is the use case that kind of kicked my butt, uh, mm. to, like stick it to the top of our roadmap, was um, we still want to use Remix, right? Like you still want to be yeah. in that flow with loaders and actions and fetchers and all the pending states and the forms um, and request and response. Like I just, I still want to like think the server client paradigm because I mm -hmm. like it and it's, and it's flexible, right? Like you could write it that way for a single page app and then maybe someday you can move it over to server stuff. So um, we built spa mode that allows you to run remix without a server, uh, which 90% of remix is already react router and already runs without a server. Like it's already a single page app. It can just server render. Mm -hmm. So spa mode is really just, us saying, all right, we're just going to make a single entry HTML file out of your root route, sort of like an SSG thing. And then um, from there, it's just like Remix normally, where we send all the assets to the browser. And so now if you visit the page, you get the static HTML thing that we built at uh, build time when you do Remix build. And then uh, from there, it's all getting client bundles. And it's just, it's there's no server rendering. There's no server. It's talking to client loaders. Hmm. Uh, but you're in that you're in that remix flow and it's a super fun. So yeah, might talk about that. Um, I took, you already know this, but I took your uh, Epic uh, React app that you build, the bookshelf app. And I just barely five minutes before this call converted it completely over to remix spa mode. Um, Going to make some videos about how to do that. So that'll be cool. Mm -hmm. um, what else have we shipped? Veep. We got Vite now. Uh, that's mostly for us to just like shed responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> no, share share responsibility. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true, actually. Because um, you're, you're contributing back to Vite as well, and and uh, I think that's a you know totally. It's a good good thing. Uh, speaking of which, a really dumb little feature. Something that uh, I really liked about Remix is when you import an asset. Like it just gave you an href to like include however you want, mm -hmm. like CSS, right? When you import CSS into Remix, it doesn't just do some magical who knows what to get CSS on the page. You actually got an href and you put it into a link yourself. Um, and uh, Vite couldn't quite do that the way that Remix could, but now it can. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know that our our team helped contribute some of that stuff. So yeah, you're you're right. It is. It is two way, but I'm trying to get away from bundlers personally completely. So I probably will never be very involved with 
mm. <laughs> RV stuff. Yeah, but, but the, this is the real world and lots of people want and uh, use bundlers. So I appreciate yeah. that that is a priority for the Remix team. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, thank you for yeah. clarifying that. We will always support bundling because there are performance improvements mm. that you only get with bundling. So yeah, yeah but, no, no you know, bundle is a pipe dream. I, I think that um, having a, a focus on how do we do this without any magical tools actually leads to a simpler API and, and implementation as well. Yeah. Um, so I think both goals are important. Yeah, then the bundlers can just target the real thing instead of like, that, that's, that's a big regret I have of a remix is that the first thing that happens is a bundler looks at a config and some magic files mm. and then remix goes. Um, you know, there is no real, I mean, your server file is an entry point, but you import your build at the top of that yeah. thing, right? And it's like just this, uh, something else made this, I don't even know what it is kind of thing. Yeah. And that, that stuff, stuff always bugs me. So that's, that's actually kind of what I was saying where we probably didn't spend enough time on our primitives, even though we mm. had the knowledge and the skills and, and could have had the foresight if we took a little more time, but we were in a hurry. <laughs> yeah. Well, Ryan, it's been awesome to chat with you. I do want to ask you though, specifically, is there anything that um, you're particularly excited to talk with people about or that you hope people come and talk with you about when we're at the conference? Um, user experience. Like hmm. I just want really good web apps. Like I'm tired of, tired of jank. I wanted to just be like snappy and tight and like intentional, right? Like when you're using the web and you're clicking it, you're like buying a flight or you're putting some money into an ETF or like whatever you're doing, or you're just trying to pay your dang electric bill. You're just like never, I, I don't know. I don't trust most websites that I have to use. Mm -hmm. I'm always afraid. Like, uh, you know, I've been, I've been charged. I think it was, my wife was trying to buy something online and we got charged, uh, $700, 14 times. Whoa. Yeah. She'd click the button and like a spinner came up and then the button just showed up again. And she was like, what the heck? Why didn't it work? And so she clicked it again and she ended up doing this like 14 <laughs> times or whatever. Yikes. And then credit card company calls me and I check the thing and it's like, what are we doing? Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it's just, we should, Let's 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 build better UX. Come and tell me what you're building, um, and what part of the UX you don't like, and let's let's think about a better way to do it. Mm, love that. Awesome. Well, Ryan, thanks for giving us some of your time. I'm really looking forward to seeing you um, with a crowd of people asking you questions <laughs> about UX, and uh, and in your uh, just the way that you do it, uh, being totally there for people to uh, to chat with them and make them feel welcome. So. I appreciate your presence at the conference. I think you're going to make it a special place and I hope to see other people there. Thanks, man. I'm glad you're throwing it. It's going to be a good time. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you at the conference in April. Bye.